Speaking of a dangerous team, they're dangerous, but they're also in the play in. Let's talk about a dangerous team that, oh, I don't know, Tarika didn't lose a game all season long. There was a parade yesterday. There was a parade in South Carolina honoring the South Carolina Gamecocks undefeated and untied as they used to say in football undefeated and untied your women's uh, NCAA champions unexpected champions. They lost like what the top seven players uh, from 2023 came back in 2024 and won the championship. Let's hear uh, some highlights from that parade yesterday in Columbia. After we planned to be here last year during this time, it wasn't harvest time. It wasn't. Um, and it was a devastating loss to all of us, all of us that were a part of it. Um, and I, I was hurt, deeply hurt, deeply, deeply. Um, not, not to destroy my faith, but I, I did ask why. I did. And most of us that really understand, we, we need to know. And we need to know what we need to know. But God sometimes says, I can show you better than I can tell you. So it's I'll done. show you. Hey, Tarika, did you see um, – Somebody on, uh, I saw this, I wish I could give credit to who, I want to give credit to the proper person, but I saw it on Instagram. Somebody put Don Staley's post-game speech to a church organ. Did you see this? Yes. <laughs> they sure did, and I was dying because what? <laughs> you know. If you ever spent any time in a Baptist church. <laughs> you know. You know what it means when that organ get going. The sermon is yeah, the preacher yeah, is it's preaching. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, you say a, you say a phrase, burn up. And okay. then I thought, burn up. <laughs> and <laughs> I said <laughs> that oh, Hammond B3, that Hammond B3 organ get going. And then and then it's shouting time. But it is shouting time. Yep. But you said something. I'm interested. Look. We know South Carolina, uh, they answered every question all year long when you're undefeated yep. and you got you got some people from the transfer portal. You got some freshmen and you got Cardoso who is uh, going to the WNBA draft. We'll talk about that in a second. And it's going to be uh, one of the top picks in the draft. Look, yeah. you've got the players. You've got the conference. It's a tough conference. You took on the same team that knocked you out last year in the semifinals. You take them on in the final. Yeah. And you win that, you really, there, there are really no questions that you are that are left to answer. However, in your feed, you think South Carolina is not getting all the flowers it deserves. Why not? Nope, and never have because it's a team full of really? black women with a black coach, and that's the bottom line. It's this this team was. Let me tell you, I had the pleasure of watching this team from the beginning of the season. When I say the beginning, I mean, I was in Paris, France with this team for their first game of the season against Notre Dame. And I could see the concerns that that Don Staley had at the time. Now, granted, Notre Dame was still finding themselves too. They still had a new um, freshman point guard in Hannah Hidalgo. They were still trying to figure themselves out without Olivia Miles. So there were two teams totally that were really trying to discover their chemistry and who they were as new teams. But I do, I also understood what Dawn was saying when she was saying they're just a, a silly bunch of group and, and like a daycare, right? There were things that they needed to improve on. Their, you know, defensives of, of, of assignments, getting stronger on that end. Um, and that sticks out to me the most because that was one of the things that she continued to say is that we have got to get better with making sure we minimize the miscommunications on defense. And yet it was Raven Johnson's defense that shut down Caitlin Clark in that final matchup. Um, she talked about how last year, these teams, um, a lot of the criticism came because this was a team that didn't shoot very well. And this year, they were one of the top three shooting offenses in the country. And so 
when you look at how this year was supposed to literally be a rebuilding year, when you look at all five starters being gone because they were drafted, like when you just think about mm. how we just mentioned OKC took two years to get together, this was OK. This this was this was Carolina's year to be like, OK. And even I will go so far as to say Dawn Staley has openly said that when she looked at the challenges that this team could possibly face coming into the season, she considered retiring. Like, listen, I've been 15 years here, 24 years coaching. I might, I think I might be done. I ain't really got no reason. Like, I, she don't have nothing to prove neither. And yet her faith and her belief in this team allowed her to stay. And the problem with that is that we have seen this year specifically so many people so entrenched in Caitlin Clark and deservedly so because she's an amazing player. But I think the story of what South Carolina has done and what they did to get here and how difficult it is, it is hard to be perfect in anything. But it is hard to be perfect in women's basketball with the transfer portal the way that it is, with teams being able to go and players being able to, to, to choose and use their leverage to go to wherever they want to go. The, the parity in women's basketball is there. It exists. So there is no, well, this team can't, nah, this team can beat you the same way another team can beat you despite where that team is located or what conference that team is in. So the women's basketball structure is hard. To go perfect in a rebuild year mm. is something that needs to be discussed. And I am disappointed in my media colleagues who have decided to focus on what's popular instead of doing the work to focus on the, the, the quality of the story that comes along with celebrating South Carolina. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. Now, can't you do both now? Because I think you do have to, you do have to focus on this, this wave, this move. It's a movement here. It's something, there's a moment happening that's significant in women's basketball. So I think that definitely has to be covered. But to your point, yes, you also have to talk about South Carolina because we had, I was talking to Smith about this the other day. We had Don Staley on yeah. brother from another. It must have been 2000, maybe it was 22, uh, 2022, 21 or 22. We had her on the show and I just remember her saying, uh, and, and she was actually because she's so cool. I mean, first of all, she does great, as you know. I mean, it's amazing. She great media it's amazing. savvy, funny. I mean, profound, says things that need to be said, says things that people are thinking and won't say, and then says <laughs> things that people aren't thinking and should be thinking. <laughs> all right. So she's operating on multiple levels. But she did say that people look at her as if she just goes and calls these players to South Carolina and rolls the balls out there and they just somehow turn into a good team she says as if I can't coach. Yeah, I think taking it to the next level. Everything you said is spot on. Plus, she's a great coach. Oh, How many coaches coach. can do this? Even if she's not undefeated undefeated is just that's the uncommon favorite she's talking about. She's like, oh, I, I can understand why I left her speechless and in tears. Oh, God, you did this for me. You did this yeah. for me. Can you imagine if they had just won a championship and lost three or four games that in itself would be an amazing coaching job, but they win a championship with this group and they're undefeated. Yeah. They're, That's coaching. And, 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 and it's coaching. It's coaching, it's coaching talent, it's it's building, um, building a community and building a culture of winning. That's why people come to South Carolina. Not only are you coached by one of the best, but you have been, you will be in a culture of winning and a culture of what it means to be successful, not just on the basketball court, but if you look at past players that are currently in the WNBA or even past players that are just simply um, pouring back into the game in some way from Dawn Staley, you will see they are successful as people. And that's important. 
And to your point, yes, I do think you absolutely have to cover all aspects of women's basketball. The problem is not so much that folks are overly covering Caitlin Clark. The problem is there isn't not a near black player that has ever come out that has gotten the same kind of coverage that a Caitlin Clark has received, that a Sabrina Unesco received at one time, that a Kelsey Plum received at one time. That's the problem. Not that they don't deserve, but that there are other players who have also been deserved of that kind of attention and have never received it. Asia Wilson is a two-time WNBA mm. champion, two-time MVP, a national champion, has a statue outside of Columbia, um, outside of South Carolina in Columbia, and no one has ever created a 96-page magazine spread for her. That's what we're talking about. She has never been offered a shoe deal. That's what we're talking about. She doesn't receive the same kind of treatment that her white counterparts receive. That is what we're talking about. We're not saying decrease the coverage on another player. We're simply saying increase the coverage on black and brown players who deserve it too. How do we get there? How do we what? get there? Because uh, that's the million dollar question. Hey, thank you for watching brother from another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.